morning. So they I present to you life and death. Choose life that you may live. Can I point, please? Can I point? Thank you. I hate clicky ah, technology. It's at an end of me. I propose to you a question today. What if the Lord were to come right now? If the Lord were to come this second, just everything stopped, and the Lord were to come down, do you know for certain Nothing doubting that you would go to heaven. I like the introduction. It doesn't fit. It's an introduction to the old covenant, not the introduction to the new. But it introduces the same concept here. I present to you today life and death. The most important choice you make, life and death. And what will you do with that? In 1 John 5, he puts it this way. These things I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know. Did you get the word that I want you to get? Know that you have eternal life. And then you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. John put it this way. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So when I say today that I present to you life and death, it's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about something more important than just church as usual. We're talking about our eternal fate. Uh, the, the one chance where God has done all the work. He has given up his body. He has given up his blood. He has offered us that cup of living water and presented us this question. And it says that we may know. Isn't that a beautiful word? No. It's so nice to know things and not to think, think, I might. But instead in his word, he presents how. And he presents to us salvation. But we must ask ourselves, it tells us that we must believe in him. But we ask, who is he? Who is Christ? Simon Peter put it this way. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Paul put it, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. John said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. We know that in Christ we have him, but we must understand that who Christ is. He is God. Paul said, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man. And we ask ourselves, why is there this mediator? Why do we need somebody between to go between you and God? Isaiah says, because your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face. Ouch. We know that we are offered life and death. And in Christ is the only life. He says, drink of this water so that you will never thirst again. Come to me. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. And outside of me, there is nothing. There is death. Earlier in Bible class, we mentioned it. The weeping, the gnashing of teeth. And there is a separation from God that must stay in place because there is only one mediator. There is only one who can go between us and God and make us righteous. And we ask that original question, right? Do you choose life or do you choose death? Do you know for certain that if the Lord comes today where you're headed? Paul put it this way in Romans. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. 
For it is the power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, it is the power of God to salvation. For we know that life is only found in Christ, and the only way we are in Christ is through the gospel. For Christ is God. But we, uh, we always speak of the gospel. And so often we want to say the gospel. And we'll be talking about the Bible. Is the Bible holy and sacred? Yes. Is the Bible beautiful? Does it teach us? Does it nurture us? Does it cause us to grow into what is, he wants us to be? Yes. But is it the gospel? No. The gospel is part of the Bible. It is that story of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. It is the part where we come into contact with his blood. When we say that he had to die so that in him we could die. For we are already dead. We are just waiting for death to take us so that we can suffer for eternity. That's our life outside of Christ. And he dies so that we could be introduced into his death. I declare to you the gospel by which also you are saved. For I delivered you of all that which I has received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's a witness against us, isn't there? In this, there's another witness, isn't there? There is where they saw Christ die. Because that's the only way we could get out of this life that leads to death, is to die. We saw Christ be buried. We know that without the burial, there is no connecting with his life. And then we know that he rose the third day. For what? So that... As Isaiah said, there is a separation between you and God. The iniquities, the sin in your life has separated from you so far from God that he can't look at you. He can't see you. Because all he can see is that sin. And God is so perfect and so holy, he cannot look at you. But he says this, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. A beautiful death. A, ter a term we've heard often is Good Friday. I don't know. I've, I was raised with this term. I'd heard it. Good Friday. What makes it so good? Because only in death can we be reconciled. Only in death can God start to look at us and not see sin that he is too pure to look at. There's another promise there. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's that belief in what? In that gospel. In that not only was he buried, only, not only did he die, but there's that belief that he was raised. In him we have reconciliation through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. For as in Adam, all die. Even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. That reminds me of a question. Have you all figured out what the question is? I, I'll remind you if you don't remember this. If he were to come back right now, what did it say? Afterward, those who Christ at his coming, if he comes back right now, are, do you know for certain, nothing doubting where you're going to end up? Separated from God because we are so full of sin and iniquity that God can't look at us. Or do you know for certain that when he comes back, he's going to say, come on in. My good and faithful servant. Whew. Do you know that? 
our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection. But we've presented that, that there's this, we've got to believe in it. We, we, we have to actually trust Christ that if he was crucified, that he was buried, and that he truly rose. Because if, we, if our hope is that one day we will rise with him, then we must trust that he rose as that first shoot that we can trust. But what if we don't change? Is there more to it than just believing all that stuff? What if we remain in our sins? What happens? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Don't let anybody trick you out of this. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, in Christ we are cleansed of our sins, but the problem is if we just go running back to that mud. It's like that swine, but you get it all perfect and ready to show. And you bring it to show and it's beautiful and everything, because that's the best pig I've ever seen, and the next day it's back in the mud. And God tells us that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. There must be a change. Luke put it this way. He says that Christ said, I tell you no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So it leaves us with a question. I don't know if you figured out the question yet. So I'm going to try and see if I can remind you of the question. It's really sneaky. Thank you. You figured out it's supposed to stay on that slide. I'm sorry. I trick everyone. I don't mean to, actually. I'm just special. Uh, what if the Lord were to come right now? Yeah, y'all can actually see it behind me, by the way. Would you know for certain? Nothing doubting that you would go to heaven. This isn't a deep lesson about all the difficulties we can have in Scripture. But it is a lesson with a question. And it's a question that I want to give you a second to actually think about. I don't want you to hear this question as something I'm saying to you. I want you to hear this question as something I'm asking to you. And if you want to answer no, just come running up here. I don't care. I'll stop in the middle. It doesn't bother me a second. Point is, I want you to consider this question. The roof disappears. Let's throw in a tornado because they're so fun. We throw in a tornado, rips off the roof, and we see the Lord coming down. What is our thought? Are we like, finally, God, I get to go to be with you. I know that I, I have come to you. I, was, I have died with you. I was buried with you. I'm ready to be raised like you. I want to be like you. You were the first fruit. You've already done it. Can I do it now? Or do you see him coming and you're scared? Maybe. Maybe he'll let me in. Maybe he'll be gracious to me. Maybe there's a, a chance I'll be okay. I don't like thinking about anything that I have no concept of. I hate starting anything new. I hated starting school. Trust me. I went to high school. I was so nervous. Started college. Nervous. Right? I hate not knowing. I hate having any doubt. I like to know things. If you can give me a guarantee, money back, 90-day guarantee, I like it. Most of us do. 
Most of us like to know that there is a guarantee with something. And when the Bible puts it so clear, that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13, if you don't believe me, it's in there. It's in there. I keep pointing at it. That you may know. How much doubt does that allow? If I know something, I know something. And I know that if the Lord opens up this roof, I'm right with him. I'm ready. And if I walk out of this building and get hit by a Mack truck, I'm ready. And I know that whatever comes in my life, I'm ready. Because it's the gospel that saves us. The good news that there's something more than death. I don't know how many of this is personal to you, but it needs to be. I don't want to throw in a bunch of extra. I want you to just answer one question. You can get a whole bunch of different scripture here, and, and I presented to you the way that we get in Christ, the way that the gospel is presented to us. But at the end of the day, it's all about you answering this question. It's all about you looking inside yourself and going, am I scared? Am I afraid of the day that this life ends? Or am I ready for it? And it's just one little hop step over to heaven, right? It's one little, come in, my good and faithful servant. Because today I present to you a choice. Life and death. Choose life that you may live. Usually, you'll, you'll hear this simplified, the gospel simplified, that we must, you know, having heard of him, have faith in what he said. We presented that you must believe in him, but he tells us that we must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He tells us that we must confess him as Lord. Do you believe that Jesus is Lord? Yes. And that was enough for them to be willing to baptize. And then he asked it in a really pointed way that I love. What are you waiting for? That's a quote, direct quote. Now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash away your sins. I like when the Bible hits you so hard in the face that it actually makes you pay attention. What are you waiting for? It's a question to you. It's the same question we've been asking. What are you waiting for? And we know that if we are faithful unto death, we will receive the crown of life. So today we offer two types of invitation. We've always got, you can always come forward. Or afterward, you may want to ask somebody, say, hey, I don't have the answer. I don't know for certain. Talk to somebody next to you. They'll get in touch with somebody. We'll talk to you, right? We will be the body that will help you. Or if there's somebody who has not been faithful, you know that you were joined with Christ, but you have not been faithful. And it says if you're faithful unto death, you will receive the crown of life. Or if there's somebody who just wants to be joined and connected with this body here. We ask that you come now as we stand and as we sing.